and welcome to the big one. This is it. This is our final regular season podcast of the NFL season. Don't worry. We'll be back for the draft. We'll be back for futures, but we are wrapping it up here with our Super Bowl preview. Matt Brown, Adam Candy, and Steven Andrus coming at you from the lines. If you want to follow us on the Twitter machine, you can, and it's free at Steven Andrus one at Adam Candy two E's no I and I am at Matt Brown M two. Fellas, here it is. We are down to the Chiefs and the Eagles. We are sitting one and a half in favor of the Eagles at every rest of country book as we sit right now. The total, there is a couple of 51s out there. 50 and a half is the prevailing total right now. Again, we are recording this on Tuesday. Wanted to get you you guys our thoughts as early as humanly possible. The disclaimer remains Everything we talk about here, the lines could move. They probably will move. They probably will juggle back and forth. Specifically, the prop lines are going to move, but we can at least talk you through why we made the bets that we made, why we're thinking the way that we're thinking, and hopefully it'll all still be applicable by the time you watch this and you're able to go in and place the bets for you guys. So going to kick things off here, guys, with just kind of some roundtable discussion on these two teams in general. Adam, I want to start with you on this one. And first and foremost, what do you what do you envision as the most unlikely outcome in your opinion of this game? Because everybody talks about how they think this game is going to go, but I think if we can reverse engineer this sometimes, we can actually get some insight into what's going on here. So, what would be the most unlikely outcome for you in this one? we get to the Kansas City Chiefs being 10 points, 14 points, 20 points better than the Philadelphia Eagles. I I can absolutely see the Kansas City Chiefs winning this game. In fact, most of where I end up leaning is in that direction. But I don't see how with the way Philadelphia controls the ball with as good as they are up front on both sides of the ball, where the Chiefs are able to run away from Philadelphia because this isn't the big play Chiefs team that we've seen in the past. They don't have the ability to go over the top and get quick scores. That used to be how the Chiefs blew people out. It used to be a matter of, wow, here we go with an over the top to Tyreek Hill, and all of a sudden you're down 14 nothing. and you don't know how. That, to me, feels very unlikely against a Philadelphia team that wants to control the ball and is going to put pressure on Patrick Mahomes, at least in some level. Stephen, what would be the most unlikely outcome for you in this thing? Barring injury, an Eagles blowout is the most Mm -hmm. unlikely outcome for me just because of what we've seen from this team all year long against inferior opponents, much less strong than what we have with the Kansas City Chiefs here. We know the Eagles have been a dominant first half team this year. They have scored a ton of points. They have been right there with the Chiefs in terms of first quarter EPA per play. But what they haven't done a lot of the time, barring injuries from their opponents or you know just a, a fantastic matchup with the Giants, is they don't really step on throats for a lot of the regular season. They kind of leave teams in it. They take their foot off the gas. They try to just get to the finish line and win a game here. So I would be fairly surprised if the Eagles were to win this game by double digits based on what we know about how they like to run their offense and also combined with the fact that I'm still not convinced Jalen Hurts in that shoulder is 100% and we have not seen really efficient passing offense from the Eagles in this postseason. Yeah, from my end, guys, mine would be the most likely outcome to me is just a a back and forth shootout. I, I just don't see it. I have a pretty strong lean towards the under in this thing. I think that you certainly look at how the Eagles want to play and how the Eagles are designed to play. Then I factor in the defense, which I do have a lot of respect for. I think that this Chiefs defense certainly has come on in the second half of the season as well. So I think they will also have their moments against this Eagles offense. And so for me, if we're, you know, talking about this thing on Monday of next week and it was a 38, 37, you know, whatever, something like that would be just shocking to me. Like, I, I just don't see a back and forth shootout track meet type game here. And that would really, really kind of blow me away. I would see, 
I would see a 13-10 game way before I would see a 38-37 type game, uh, in my opinion, as to how the game kind of goes and how things are going to play out. Steven, let's uh, let's do hit on that total right now. And let's know, I don't want to get where you are going with all of this, but I do want to talk through the different game states and different game scripts sure. and game scenarios in which we can maybe provide at least a little insight to everybody out here as to whether they're leaning towards the over or the under would be, what is the what is the game state for an over in this one for you? And then what is a game state for the under in this for you? The game state for the over for me is, is pretty simple. It's that Patrick Mahomes and his ankle is healthy and that the Eagles passing defense is not as good as the metrics indicate. There's been some speculation about that leading into this Super Bowl. If you just look at the overall numbers on paper, no matter which offense has the ball, it really is strength on strength in this game. It's it's really cool. It's really fascinating. It's why we have a spread of only one point here. Even uh, at open, it was only one point, one point and a half for the Chiefs before it moved to the Eagles. So overall for the season, you have the number one passing offense for Kansas City by DVOA and the number one passing defense in the Eagles by DVOA. And if you look at EPA per play, it's also number one versus number one. So... It's really cool to have that in a game, but there's at least, I think, some arguments to be made. And even at this hour, I'm not sure where I fall on this argument, but it's a great point that the Eagles in games against teams that are top 16 offenses have not been this strong against the pass. We've talked about all year about the Eagles can only play the teams that are on their schedule. But the point remains that coming into the season, they had the number three easiest schedule by opponent win totals and that bore out throughout the season they had one of the five easiest schedules of opposing defenses this year so for the Eagles pass defense in particular Connor Allen put this out there as a great point I thought in the five games against top 16 offenses the Eagles were well below league average in pass EPA per play explosive pass rate and success rate allowed some of those games in particular 35 points allowed to the lions 32 points allowed to washington 33 points allowed to green bay 40 allowed on christmas eve to the dallas cowboys so if this game's going over matt to me it's because the eagles pass defense is overrated and patrick mahomes exposes that the under for me is kind of the complete opposite, right? Like this is legitimate. They have fixed it. Their receivers for the Chiefs are not as good as the awesome DBs that the Eagles have on paper with James Bradbury and Darius Slay and CJ GJ. So uh and, and that their their front seven with five guys with double digit sacks this year is able to generate pressure. So those are kind of the two situations where I see an over and under. I think it all comes down to what the Chiefs offense can do against this Eagles defense. And it depends on whether or not you think that these Eagles defensive numbers are inflated by the overall schedule they played. Yeah, I think for me, an over game state as both teams having to do their part. I, I do believe this game plays tight, right? And so I don't think this is one of those deals where for us to get to the 51, the Chiefs are going to have to do all the heavy lifting and the Eagles just kind of chip in or vice versa with the Eagles doing the heavy lifting and the Chiefs having to chip in. I, I think both teams are going to have to do their part in this one because I do see a pretty tightly contested matchup. I think from an unders perspective for me is the Eagles have success in doing what they want to do, which I think is run the ball and run the ball primarily first and foremost and controlling the clock and trying at their very best, the best that they can, to try and keep Mahomes and, and Travis Kelsey and company over there on the sidelines. So I think a a an Eagles an Eagles game plan that is working, I think, is very very correlated to the under in this thing. Adam, if you take a look at this total, what would lean you towards an over fifty and a half, and what would lean you towards an under kind of fifty one? I'm going to go slightly oppo here on what leads to the over to what you were talking about there because I don't know that the Eagles want this game to play close like that. And I know that's an obvious statement to make, right? Oh, they don't want a close game. They want to win big. I think the Eagles would love to see a situation in which they put the pressure on Patrick Mahomes to have to throw the ball, to have to prove that he is completely healthy, to be able to pin the ears back on the pass rush and really go after him. And granted, those who go after him generally do not get to Patrick Mahomes, but that is Patrick Mahomes when healthy. 
teams that are able to put pressure on him in the state that he's in right now, the way the Eagles might be able to do, I think that puts up a situation where the Eagles might be Mm -hmm. interested in throwing the ball a little bit more than they have been. And I hear Mm -hmm. what Steven says because I have harbored the same concerns about Jalen Hurts based largely on what Jalen Hurts himself tells us. He's the one saying, I'm not right. Injury report or not, he's the one saying I'm making the best of it, right? So if that's the case, that I think the game state for the over correlates very closely to playing some overs on longest receiving props for A.J. Brown, for Devontae Smith. I think that's the way that that correlated play for me is going to go is over correlates to the Philadelphia Eagles passing game, because how do we get more scoring in a game that likely is going to play close. We get more scoring if the Eagles are able to strike quickly. I don't think if we look at the Eagles secondary and what the Chiefs uh, are able to put out there other than Marquez Valdez-Scantling, they don't really have anybody who's going to get you the quick strike. It's just not there. Unless a screen game situation pops for them, then I don't see where the Chiefs are able to move the ball down the field quickly. Now, the other side of this, what's the game state that plays to the under. Uh, I think the game state that plays to the under is that the Chiefs are not able to run the ball because I think for the Chiefs to be able to do their part offensively, they have to have some level of running game in order to keep the pass rush of the Philadelphia Eagles honest. I think it doesn't need to be pounding the ball to Isaiah Pacheco on first down every single time, but I do think that for the Chiefs to win, This game needs to play toward the under. And I know that probably sounds weird to a lot of people who are used to the Chiefs being able to go out and score big and this and that, but not against this Philadelphia defense. Mm -hmm. Not I don't think you want against this Philadelphia defense to be in those situations. So ultimately, I'm keying on in terms of where I think the score is going to go. Yeah, the Eagles passing game. So, guys, stick around. We will have our best bets at the end of this podcast. Of course, everything we do, absolutely free at the line. So if you do want to help us out, all you got to do is hit the subscribe button, whether you're watching us on the video side or on the podcast side of things. Just a little subscribe, rate, review, thumbs up if you're on the YouTube side. Really does help everything out. We do appreciate that a ton. Guys, success rate versus the pass, regular season versus the postseason. Uh, Eagles were fifth in success rate versus the pass. The Chiefs were 16th in the success rate versus the pass that said in the postseason, uh, they are first and second Eagles first in the chiefs are second. So both of those teams did come out and basically defend the pass pretty well. Now you could, you could point to the opponents there for the Eagles. And I think that would be fair in all that, but it's least worth mentioning. I think one of the chess matches here and Adam, we talk about kind of like being able to, who's going to be able to run the ball and who's going to be able to run the ball successfully. I think one of the chess matches here that's pretty interesting for me. So the Chiefs have used dime personnel on 30 on on a little over 30 percent of their plays in four of their last five games. And so they have run really light boxes out there and they have tried to defend the pass as as well as humanly possible. Now, that could be due to opponent. Of course, we obviously know. Joe Burrow and company with the Bengals have all these playmakers and things like that, but they're not going to be able to do that against this Eagles team, right? Because the Eagles will then just run it down their throw. You can't run out a bunch of a bunch of DBs against this offensive line and against Jalen Hurts and against this running attack. And so we are, I think, going to have to see the Chiefs play defense a little differently than they have over the last month of the season. And two weeks to prepare. I get all that. Andy Reid's a great coach. Everybody on that staff's a great coach. I get all that, but I do think there is something to that, that they're going to have to go about trying to defend this Eagles team differently than they played the last month of the season. I think it's really important to look at how these quarterbacks have performed under pressure, right? Because the question that I think everyone has is we know that Steve Spagnuolo's defense can be blitz heavy, depending on the situation. Well, you you might want to be careful doing that against the Philadelphia Eagles, right? Uh, Because where they really can beat you and beat you quickly is if the one-on-one matchups develop in the back end, right? A.J. Brown is not coverable one-on-one. Devontae Smith is not coverable one-on-one, especially with what the Chiefs have in their secondary. So that, to me, is a very interesting part of it. I think it's even less about necessarily stopping the run against the big Philadelphia Eagles offensive line. I think it really is about how much do they choose 
to switch out of that dime personnel and say, okay, we're going to make Jalen Hurts beat us, Mm -hmm. right? I'm I'm very curious to see how they do that, especially if they decide to put Jalen Hurts under pressure. So, Stephen, when we take a look here, I mean, one of the biggest things is going to be You know, how much success can Travis Kelsey have for the Chiefs? We know, listen, you can, there's a lot of receivers on that side, none of which I think we would, any of us would look and point at and say, like, that's going to be Patrick Mahomes' go to guy in this game. I expect the Eagles to pay a ton of attention to Travis Kelsey. I expect Travis Kelsey to still get targets. Now, are those successful or not? We shall see. But Patrick Mahomes isn't going to go away from his guy here in the Super Bowl. He's been getting it done all season long. They have that weird connection where Patrick Mahomes gets outside of the pocket and Travis Kelsey just knows where he's going with the ball and he just knows what's going on. Uh, In that game against the Bengals, he completed, Patrick Mahomes completed every single pass he threw from outside the tackle box on the run and when he held the ball longer than four seconds. So he's like that good at creating and making plays and and Travis Kelsey is certainly a big part of that. So, you know, now we look at this Eagles defense, which again was good against the pass all season long, but it's kind of like, who are they going to put against Kelsey when it comes to trying to cover him, right? I mean, they've got Kazir White, a linebacker who's a 64 coverage grade according to Pro Football Focus. The other linebacker in TJ Edwards, much better. He was a 77 in coverage grade. That was actually 10th among 71 qualifying linebackers. Do you try to go with a slot corner? On Travis Kelsey, the problem is, is the slot corner for the Eagles is Avante Maddox, and he's 5'9", 185. So it's like trying to cover Travis Kelsey with Avante Maddox probably isn't the greatest idea. And then if you bring up a safety, then, of course, we know the different things that can go wrong there. It would have to be Chauncey Gardner-Johnson. You're not putting Marcus Epps in coverage. He was actually 84th out of 90 safeties in coverage grade this year. So it's going to have to be Ch- uh, Chauncey Char- Char- Gardner-Johnson. But then now, if you're pulling him up, that does then open up maybe Mahomes to an MBS down the field and all these things like that. So I really I, I don't want to say that I feel like this game is going to come down to how well the Eagles can cover Travis Kelsey. But I will say this. I think it is a very, very, very big, big turning point in the game if they figure out a way to limit Travis Kelsey and then Mahomes has to, and then at that point, try and get this done with an MBS or a, you know, a Kadarius Tony or a Juju Smith-Schuster, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, I think the other thing to note is all of this is – Assuming that Travis Kelsey is healthy, it's Tuesday. He's most most likely going to be fine with two weeks between games. But also keep in mind, if you're betting Travis Kelsey overs, just remember he wasn't even able to finish the game in the AFC Championship. So there's always the chance that the back injury flares up. We don't know what what percentage percentage he's going into the game. But to your point, Matt, you mentioned dime coverage for the for the Eagle or for the Chiefs defense. I wouldn't be surprised if the Eagles go more dime defense in this game to get an extra corner on the field or an extra safety on the field to help out with Travis Kelsey. And then if they do that, you potentially have the option to move a Bradbury or a Darius Slay into the slot to help out with Travis Kelsey and still have secondary guys to help out on the outside with the Chiefs receivers who are also very banged up, by the way. We already know Nicole Hardman is not going to play. We'll see how effective Kadarius Toney and Juju Smith-Schuster are. It seems Juju is the more questionable of the two. So I think the Eagles have options here because of what we've talked about all season long. This roster is so deep. This is the roster with the QB contract and his rookie contract cheat code that allows you to spread all that money throughout the rest of the roster in a way that the Chiefs cannot with Patrick Mahomes now making $50 million a year. They can bring in Avante Maddox. They can bring in Kayvon Wallace and maybe not necessarily cover Travis Kelsey like you said with your concern, but then to put him somewhere else and have one of their studs be on Kelsey. I think we saw a little bit of that in the last – it was a different coaching staff, but same philosophy when – They helped out with Gronk when the Eagles won the Super Bowl the last time around. So we've seen teams do that. It wouldn't surprise me in the least. Um, But I think the Eagles have plenty of options here to try and figure this out. Adam, one of the most popular bets people are going to make is Super Bowl MVP. I want to get to that before we get to our best bets here for the game and how we think this thing's going to play out. Um, Listen, I guess my question to you is, what is a scenario in which one of these two quarterbacks doesn't win. Now, I think it is far more likely 
that Mahomes wins it than Hurts wins it. Like I think we could I think there is at least a game. I think there is a, at least a game outcome, a range of outcomes in which Jalen Hurts only throws for 140 yards, runs for 40 yards, but the defense is just dominant and maybe it goes to somebody else or something like that. I don't think a path to victory for the Chiefs doesn't run through Patrick Mahomes' right arm. And so I have a very hard time in getting to anybody else other than Mahomes unless it's a Kelsey because it's a run out. And I don't think any of us thinks this game's going to be a run out. But like if they're up 17 at halftime and it's because Kelsey's caught eight balls for 105 and two touchdowns and then they basically just run bleed the clock out in the second half, I guess then at that point – you could maybe say there's a path to Kelsey or something like that. But I, I know people want to go and get, have the lottery tickets and the long shots and all the things like that. And I would love to be able to recommend something other than these quarterbacks that makes a ton of sense. But I think with the Eagles, if it's not hurts, it could be anyone <laughs> it could be, it could literally be like anybody. And then if it's not Mahomes, I think it's really only Mahomes or Kelsey. What's your thoughts? So I'm going to go back for one second before I get to that question, because mm-hmm. I, have, I have an interesting way that uh, I think about that. Um, since week 14, when Reed Blankenship became a serious part of the Philadelphia Eagles secondary, Chauncey Gardner-Johnson is top six in coverage grade for safeties. Mm-hmm. The Reed Blankenship addition has actually made quite a bit of difference in terms of the coverage grades for that back end of the Philadelphia uh, Eagles and Blankenship himself. If you go a uh, whole season is in top 30 for coverage. So I do think there is a way in terms of covering Travis Kelsey that they can use some of the back end guys and maybe they're going to bracket him, right? Maybe it's just mm-hmm. a matter of wherever Kelsey goes, it's going to be the linebacker on the bottom and the safety over the top. And that's what they do. I, I do think there is a way. Okay. Now to your question about Super Bowl bets, if you're thinking that you have a great way to bet someone other than one of the two quarterbacks. What you need to be doing is betting some serious alt unders because that's the only way that we get to a game where one of the quarterbacks doesn't win. You're instead of trying to throw a dart at saying which running back or which guy might get three sacks or this or that. The only way one of these two quarterbacks doesn't get MVP is if we end up with a 14 to 10 kind of game. And if we get a 14 to 10 kind of game, then go ahead and find yourself some sort of alt under 30 that you can play for serious money. That's going to be the same kind of return that you would get on hitting a dart on one of these long shots for Super Bowl MVP. Yeah, uh, uh, Stephen, I'm I'm sure you might have an alternate take on this, but it just for me again, we're looking at a, a passing prop. Of, of 294 yards now at this point for Mahomes, uh, 242 yards, essentially 241 and a half sitting there for Hertz. And so they are expected to do their part, right? And so if they even sniff these numbers that are set, it's going to go to them. So it would have to be a very, very different outcome than what is kind of projected here. Yeah, full transparency. I have a bunch of free bets that I've been putting on Eagles yeah. futures for a while here. So, so that's who I have in terms of a side in this game. But if, if I was just coming in cold right now, I wouldn't have a bet or on side or total. But if I was going to bet the chiefs to win this game, I would just bet Patrick Mahomes to win MVP at plus plus one thirty five versus plus one Oh five on the chiefs money line. Cause I agree with you. I, I can't see a scenario where the chiefs win this game and Patrick Mahomes is not the MVP. They have, a running back by committee. They have a bunch of receivers that are injured. He was completing passes to like 10 different guys this postseason. So there's no running back situations even more murky. Now they activated Clyde Edwards, Alaire. So like, even if he only right. siphons off three or four carries, it's still three or four carries. It's not going to one of the other running backs, you know? Yeah. At, at that point, I'm willing to take the chance that some individual on defense has a two picks and one of them's return for a touchdown. If that happens, so be it. But I think the extra potential profit on Mahomes MVP is worth it. On the flip side, I do think it's worth taking some shots on some non quarterbacks for the Philadelphia Eagles, because I am not confident that they can hit the downfield passing game after what we've seen over the past three games since Hertz has been back from injury here. And I actually believe that the biggest matchup advantage in this game 
is the Philadelphia rushing offense against the Chiefs rushing defense. The KC rush defense is not inside the top 10 in terms of EPA per play or success rate versus the run. They are also dead last in run stop win rate. That's ESPN's data using next gen stats and the chips that are in every player's pads to see how often they can get off blocks to make a stop in the run game in less than 2.5 seconds. The Chiefs were dead last in that category this year. Just doesn't pop up so much when Patrick Mahomes is on offense on the other side and it doesn't burn you as much. In this game, it's going to be a problem because we've talked about in previous weeks, the Eagles rushing offense is not just elite. It might be all time good. In the regular season, the gap between first and second for them was the same as the gap between second and 14th or second and 18th, depending if you were looking at EPA or success rate. They are incredible. If you look at the actual tape of what this offensive line was doing to all pro caliber players on defense in their first couple of playoff games, it's unbelievable. Jason Kelsey is a first ballot Hall of Famer. He was knocking Eric Armstead on his ass for the 49ers in the NFC title game. So we could talk about the quarterback issues all we want, but the 49ers front seven, the vaunted front seven that we talked about for so long this season – got got hosed by the Philadelphia offensive line on on several plays. Now they weren't efficient in that game. Jalen Hurts disappointed from a passing perspective, but I think the Eagles will be able to run the ball in this game against the Kansas City Chiefs. And that opens up some non-quarterbacks for me in this case. And listen, if you're into trends, you're going to hate this one because a running back has not won Super Bowl MVP since Terrell Davis on the Denver Broncos in 1998. But I also think this is the first offense since the passing era has come on in like 2011 in the NFL that has been so dominant and so elite in the running game. So I do think Miles Sanders at 30 to 1 is a pretty good price here and I think there's a definitely a lot of situations, a lot of game states where he goes for 100 yards rushing yeah. and and a couple of touchdowns here. And I'll get to more why to more as the why I think that because there's been a lot of Kenny Gainwell love and gambling Twitter over the past week. I disagree with that, but the long shot I would look at is maybe Miles Sanders at 30 to 1. All right, let's get to our bets here for the game. Adam, want to start with you. What bets are, let's just say, let's they don't necessarily have to be in your account quite yet. What bets are there and then what bets are you leaning towards and what bets do you think will end up there by the time we kick this thing off? So last year, the bet that I hit that was at the longest odds was Cam Akers for the first reception of the game at 9-1. to one. Uh, this year you can find out there, uh, I believe DraftKings has them for the individual teams even, which is even better, right? Because then you don't have to worry about who gets the ball mm. first. I just got lucky that the Rams had the ball. Uh, you can get both starting running backs at eight to one to get the first reception of the game. I would bet both of those because when you're betting the individual team, you get both options. You're going to see early on that these teams in the manner of feeling each other out, if something is not there in terms of the original pass concept, both of these quarterbacks are just going to get rid of the ball. And the most likely way they just get rid of the ball is checking it down to a running back. And so you can go for Miles Sanders. You can go for Isaiah Pacheco in both those spots at eight to one. If you think it's more of a design situation, you can get Jerry McKinnon at six to one already in my account. Uh, this one is a little bit more exotic, shall we say? Uh, but it's one of the few that I saw and immediately played. And it was the length of the last field goal made mm -hmm. in the game. I have length over 36 and a half yards on the last field goal made in this game. Either of these teams, if we're playing this game close, either of these teams, if they are marching down the field on offense, one of two things is going to happen. If you're in the situation for a potential late touchdown, both of them have shown a willingness to go for it on fourth down. And both teams ultimately understand the way that, say, the Patriots defended Ahmad Bradshaw late in the game. They're going to try to let the other team score if they need if they need the football back. I don't see a situation where the last time we see a field goal in a close game is going to be from 25 yards. That's just not the inclination of either one of these teams. I think what you could see if it's truly a close game and we're talking about Mahomes and company trying to come from behind, then we're probably going to go and say, all right, well. Is it the sort of quick drive where they try to get close enough for a field goal and they're kicking from 40, 50 yards? That to me feels much 
more likely. The other way that I would go about this is uh, I would be looking at receiver unders on the receptions totals for the Eagles. Uh, I mentioned earlier that my game state for an over is the Eagles throwing the ball, but I think if they throw the ball, it's going to be distributed. I don't think there's going to be one receiver who is the target. It's not going to be Devontae Smith. It's not going to be A.J. Brown. Uh, so for me, the first place I would be looking is I would be looking at A.J. Brown under four and a half. Uh, then beyond that, I think I would probably be looking toward the other side with the Kansas City Chiefs. And I know it's sacrilege to talk about betting an under on Travis Kelsey. But right now, with the injury, you can get Travis Kelsey under six and a half at plus 150. I'm not saying put your whole bankroll mm. into that, but if if Travis Kelsey is truly banged up in some way, shape, or form, if he's going to be the focal point of the Philadelphia defense, th the idea of Travis Kelsey going something like six for 90 is, to me, worth a plus 150 bet. Steven, what bets are in your account, my friend, and what are what are you leaning towards here? Got my phone out taking notes on all these props Adam has here because <laughs> there's too many to remember all at once for the Super Bowl, man. I'm, I'm you know me, I'm firing the board. Last chance we have till till next fall, so or maybe the NFL draft. I, I want to go back to Miles Sanders here. You know, I mentioned him as a live long shot for Super Bowl MVP. I want to explain a little bit more why because I'm also betting over 59 and a half rushing yards for him at minus 115 at BetMGM. This is based off of me having what seems to be a contrarian view of Kenny Gainwell at this point. There's been a lot of steam on his over Gainwell in terms of his rushing yards, what he's done in the first two playoff games. But I think there's a lot of box score reading going on out there with what happened in there. Because if you look more closely, in the first playoff game against the Giants, only four of Gainwell's 12 carries came in the first half. And then the Eagles were up 28 to nothing, and he got his other eight carries. Yeah. That was versus 13 first half carries for Miles Sanders yeah. out of his 17. You're not so – here's the deal. You're not – you're not contrarian here. You just looked at it. You looked at it smart and not people that are looking at it on surface level because it's the, it's the correct take. It's the right look at this game states in which the Eagles were within, which, which we, which we call game state neutral in a game that was in one score. It, Miles Sanders is the guy that's on the field. Like that, that is period right. end of story. That is all there is to it. The reason why it feels like it's a running back by committee, go down the box scores of the Eagles. They beat the piss out of everybody. Like, I mean, they, they, they just like, <laughs> there's so many games in which they won by multiple scores, right? And so that's why Gainwell was getting carries. And that's why Boston Scott gets carries and all stuff like that. Because Sirianni's the dude that puts his starters on the sidelines and not risks injury or whatever. So you're 100% right. I like Sanders takes in this one as well. I like Sanders props in this one as well. I like anything you really want to give me with Miles Sanders here. Because again, I do feel like this stays fairly close and if this stays fairly close he's the guy that's going to be on the field it's not going to be these other guys he also went over this total in 10 of his first 15 games before before playing less than 50 percent of his snaps his final two weeks of the regular season where they were clearly resting him those were the only two games the entire season where he played less than 50 percent of snaps they had the same luxury in the playoffs i mentioned the giants game the nfc championship Again, Gainwell only had four first half carries. Miles Sanders had 10 first half carries. If you think this game is going to be close and the entirety of the betting world does with a spread of one, Miles Sanders is going to get the bulk of the work here. And I also think it's worth taking some alt lines on him. You know, if if you want to look at two plus touchdowns, maybe bet like a quarter unit to a half unit. You can get plus 700 on Miles Sanders have two plus touchdowns. We know Jalen Hurts is not 100%. And if you go just straight by numbers, he had two plus scores in four of 19 games this year. It's yeah. about 21% of the time. The implied odds there are about plus 376, and we're getting plus 700 here. So and it's not sexy to, for any time touchdowns or anything and all stuff like that. But like, again, this Eagles team runs the ball, right? So they scored... For when they scored from inside the 10 yard line, they had eight passing touchdowns and 32 rushing touchdowns, right? So it's like they get inside the 10, they run the friggin' ball, right? And so I, I, I mean, Sanders first touchdown score, anytime touchdown score, multiple touchdown, all the different stuff like that, I think is all in play. Again, I know some numbers aren't as sexy as others, but a win is a win is a win. So uh, I like I am on a lot of Sanders props, actually, um, for this Love game. It. I mean, I'm on a pretty good amount of them. I love it, man. And 
related to that is my fading of Jalen Hurts. I'm under his passing yards in this game too. It's it's ticked down to two forty and a half. It's probably my stopping point. You know, if you listen to this later in the week, it's in the two thirties. I wouldn't be betting the under anymore, but. Uh, Eight yards per play during eight yards per attempt during the regular season. Three games since he's been back, 6.5, 6.4, 4.8. He's clearly not right. So that's related to Miles Sanders. If you you like Miles Sanders big, then there's probably a decent chance that Jalen Hurts is not getting as many attempts. On my end, guys, like I said, I have tons of Miles Sanders. Pro- I like him just a ton in this game. I like everything about Miles Sanders. I'm on the opposite side of y'all on this one. I think he'll get the good stuff, and I think uh, I-, I like Travis Kelsey in this game. I like him to have over on the yardage total here. I think it's a little shy. It, listen, the opportunity is going to be there. Now, whether he can cash in on that opportunity, that is that is to be determined. But like there is... There is a 0% chance in my mind that he doesn't get at least eight targets in this game, and it would not surprise me if he had a dozen plus in this game. Like I, I can't imagine you go out of the Super Bowl and you have a loss and you're having to answer questions as to why he didn't throw the ball to Travis Kelsey, the best tight end of all time, arguably, and certainly the best tight end in the, the game today. The other thing that's just interesting to me about him is like they line him up all over the place too, which I think works in my favor with all this. He, he had 748 pass snaps he ran a route on 677 of those. So he ran a route on 91% of the snaps he was in. That they passed 332 of those were out of the slot. 216 of those were out wide at wide receiver, which is the highest among all tight ends. Even Kyle Pitts, who basically played exclusively wide receiver for the Falcons there for a long time. And only 195 are in line. So like they move him all around. They try to get him in space. They try to get him open. So I, I like Kelsey to actually have some good stuff here. The other one that's in my account I have Mahomes minus 45 and a half pass yards against Jalen Hurts. Um, I think there's multiple different game states in which get me there on that one, because if if the Chiefs go nuts, well, Patrick Mahomes likely went nuts along with them. And if the Eagles are having success running the ball and the Chiefs are having to play from behind, well, then the Chiefs are having to throw the ball all over the place and the Eagles are running the ball. And if they're running the ball, they're not passing the ball. And every yard that Patrick Mahomes passes for gets me closer to that 45 and a half handicap that he has over Jalen Hurts in this game. So I have that one in the account as well. Really, really do like that one and th- feel like that one is a, a, a strong way to play this one because I think there's multiple game states in which that one gets home as well. All right, it's time here, Adam. I know you don't, it th- doesn't have to be official plays, but it's just as we sit right now. There's a total of 50 and a half out there. There's a total of 51. If you had to play the total, you're playing the over or the under, my friend. Under. Steven, 50 and a half, 51, over or the under? I'll go I'll go under because I think the Eagles are going to be able to run the ball very well. Clean sweep on the pod. I would play under 51 as well. A little bit of advice here, and guys, I guess we can't say for certain because there's all these new markets that are betting into this, and so we don't really know for sure. But historically, most of the casual money comes in late. Most of the casual money comes in on overs. So if you are wanting to bet the under on this total, a 51 and a half is actually really valuable as opposed to a 51. Um, So a 51 and a half is super valuable and I will be holding out. If I can find a 51 and a half, I will be coming in on the under on the 51 and a half. And again, historically, it is an over fest the last 48 hours leading into a game when people actually start to pay attention and bet this thing. And so I'll be holding out to see if I can get under 51 and a half. Hey, man, right, guys, here can. it is. Um, how are you going to be betting this? Listen, we know you're going to have some sort of action one way or another on the side or the total, whatever. I mean, on the, uh, on the side or the spread, whatever it is, Adam candy, are you going to be betting the money line? Are you going to be betting the spread and which team's it going to be? Nope. I will have no <laughs> money line or spread bet on this game. This is the one game a year where we have so many, better ways to attack this game than dealing with a one and a half that I want nothing to do with that. There are too many ways this game could go. I, I, look, My lean is Chiefs, but it is not nearly strong enough for me to play it. And so there are so many different ways to go about this. And think about how often we talk about playing teasers, right? Your only option in this game is if you want to tease it with the total. And I would not suggest that in any way, shape yeah. or form. So yeah, mm-hmm. to me, my, I will have probably 85% of what goes into this game on props. Steven side, what you doing? 
you know I like teasers all year long, and the Chiefs are in teaser range. Can we like <laughs> tease that with an XFL or a USFL game or something? Like, is there's is probably that some sort of cross sport thing that you can like, you know, tease or something, you know, whatever. Some <laughs> do, the, along, do the long teasers along work at those lines. leagues, or is it just yeah. the NFL? <laughs> <laughs> all right, um, yeah, I'm I'm not playing the side or the, I'm not playing the spread in this game or the money line. Um, I, I have those Eagles futures. I have them at good numbers. I do. If forced to make a pick in this game, I think I would take the Eagles because I do think that they are just otherworldly running the ball and that physicality wears on you. And I just have, you know, a a philosophical belief that in this era of the NFL, when you have that rookie quarterback contract cheat code and you build up your roster as well as the Eagles have at every other position – I believe that that will overcome an opponent that has the better quarterback and a better tight end, but not better at any other spot. Yeah, I don't have a a ton of conviction, really. uh, And that's weird because most Super Bowls I do. That said, I'm going to hold out to the end, kind of like we were talking about historically, when there is, if you want to bet an under, you wait until the end. If you want to bet the favorite on the money line, you typically wait till the end as well. For whatever reason, historically, the people want to come in and they want to win more money than they put down. And so the money line of the underdog gets bet very heavily, which actually creates a little bit of value on the money line for the favorite. I'm going to have a small play on the Eagles on the money. Line. I actually do think the Eagles are the better team. I had them number one in my power ratings for the vast majority of the season, as you guys both know. I... I do think that there are some pretty distinct advantages with them, that offensive line and being able to run the ball and kind of control the game a little bit and at least neutralize what Patrick Holmes and them can do on offense on the defensive side. So small money line play for the Eagles on me, but same with you guys. Majority of my stuff is going to be in on the props with this game. And that's really fortunate that we're able to get down so much action with all the different props that are available out there. Guys, we do have other people that have opinions on this over on the lines.com. So head over there again, everything we do absolutely free. Please hit that subscribe button. We're not done. We're going to talk draft. We're going to talk basketball. All th- I mean, everything golf, everything is happening on this channel. This is just going to be us for the football season. Guys, it's been an absolute blast. I appreciate you guys each and every week coming in here and us giving, you know, what I think was some pretty good analysis this season. I know we, we won more than we lost. There were some pretty bad weeks that were mixed in there, but uh, some really good weeks, as well and feel uh feel pretty strong about some of the stuff that we've got heading into to the super bowl here and you know as a reminder to everyone rest of country out there there's always live betting as well in the super bowl so if you see anything you can get in on that hey hey, matt just 30 seconds on this steven's talking about the eagles super bowl futures that he has if you're someone out there holding a future on either one of these teams how are you approaching live betting as a potential way off that if it's not going your way Yeah, I mean, see, I'm always team hedge for most people out there because most people don't have the type of bankrolls that that I don't that I think is worth not hedging. Right. Like, I mean, for me, you probably if you have a big Eagles future, you probably got it at like 20 ish or something to one, 22 to one, 25 to whatever those numbers that were floating out there on them at the beginning of the year. I don't think it's worth leaving with zero. And I mean, listen, I know that's an unpopular opinion amongst certainly the sharp betters out there and all that. But like, you know, most people don't have the the freedom with their bankrolls to just piss away a 25 to one ticket or 22 to one ticket or something like that. So I'm always team hedge for me. It's for me. It's hoping that the opposite team of your futures ticket gets to plus three and a half on the live line at some point. You know, it doesn't matter at what point, Hopefully, uh, obviously in the first three quarters, what we're looking for, if we can get a plus three and a half and try and middle this for like a quarter of your potential profits, I think that'd be fine. And then you have the chance of winning both of your tickets if they if they wind up in that middle. So that's kind of where I'm at. And, you know, last last bet for me, Matt, is the fact that we have a, a game with a spread of one and a high total. You can get a prop to have this game tied at any point after zero zero for mm-hmm. minus one fifteen. We're going to have lots of scoring opportunities, and it is an evenly matched game. Pretty good chance at any point in this game after it begins, we're going to have another tie. So I like that bet as well. Guys, head on over to the lines.com. Take in all the great words that are over there. We have tons of opinions on this game, as you could only imagine. Great breakdowns of offenses versus defenses and everything like that that you need to help make your informed opinion 
on everything. Take advantage of the prop finder. It is a button right there, dead center in the middle of the page. This is the most important time of year ever to take advantage of the prop finder. You are going to be able to find the best number, the best juice, the best everything that you are looking for out of this myriad thousands and thousands of different props that you have out there. And it will help you make the most EV bet that you can make for the number that you are looking for. For Steven, for Adam, I'm Matt. Good luck on all your bets here on the Super Bowl.